pounds and the cup itself costing 666 pounds that it seems fitting that the transaction that balances the books, that transfers the power and that brings light back to this world in terms of the money system is the special deposit to the Bank of International Settlement of 666 Universal Gold Credits. That is precisely what is going to happen in four weeks. I'm calling and asking for people who will be able to help on those that live in the north of the planet, those that live in the south of the planet, those that live to the west in Europe and those that live to the east in America that will help with this transmission. It will mirror a similar form to the transmission that we sent to the pontiff to end the Pontifex Romanus, the trust of trust, the Roman pontiff trust on June the 12th, on the day of illumination. And what we will send in this package will be very simple. There will be three documents, only three documents. And only an original certificate will be sent to the Bank for International Settlement. All others on this, on this package will be sent only a copy. So three documents will be sent. The first document is to the true Grey Pope, Orsini, who we weren't fully aware of when we sent the June the 12th package, to the head of the Jesuits, to Benedict, to the head of the Sovereign Knights of Malta, to the head of the Bank for International Settlement, to King Carlos and to Queen Elizabeth II. Each of them will be sent their live-born record. Of course, Benedict will be sent his again. The reason they'll be sent their live-born record is that they are all members of One Heaven. And we will remind them that they are all members of One Heaven by giving them and sending them their live-born record. The second thing that we will have, the second document, will be a double-sided writ similar to what we did when we sent the double-sided writ to Benedict and to copies to the others. And the double-sided writ will have on it uh, a private writ and a public writ. Now, the private writ is a writ for member and will be a writ of mandamus. And it will remind each of these men and the queen, the woman, of their obligations being a member of heaven to honour the special deposit of 666 universal gold credits, approximately 400 years, to the uh, commissioning of the cup and the creation of the modern system and the cursing of all of us 400 years ago, the modern financial system. And the private, sorry, that's a private writ, the public writ will be uh, a writ uh, of uh, deposit, special deposit, and it will express the historic importance of this and the deposit and the honouring by face value of the value of 666 universal gold credits. It will refer to its reference in canon and in rule. And it will remind them of the historic significance of it. Be very short, the same as the the other package, so that they are under no illusion what happens if and when they dishonour this particular special deposit. Now, the uh, third document, of course, will be a copy of the actual uh, certificate itself that validates that 666 universal gold credits have been put into an account for the Bank for International Settlement and that we wish the instrument itself to be deposited as an instrument of extreme value by the Bank for International Settlement. Now, do I expect them to honour the special deposit of the 666 universal gold credits? No, I do not. I do not expect them to, to honour it. 
I expect them to dishonour it. If they honour it, well then they honour history, they honour themselves and there, there is maybe hope for the insanity that these people have shown. But I am banking on their insanity, I'm banking on their mental illness and their inability to date to do the right thing for their own history, their own rules. To date, they have totally abdicated responsibility and hence the veil has dropped and hence the world is changing and hence the world is rebelling and resisting against their oppression and their lies and their lies are coming to be account. So I'm counting on that. So when they dishonour this instrument, when they dishonour this package, the following takes place. One, they dishonour the very fabric upon which the entire global system, the claim of control of bankers, they dishonour that system. They dishonour the treasury of heaven. Two, their dishonour is an offset against the curses of the last 400 years and indeed the entire history of the bankers and these families, but certainly of the last 400 years, we will have offset the 666 ounces of cursing and everything that took place from that point onwards with the 666 spiritual universal gold credits. So we'll have balanced the books. We'll have zeroed the account. The account is closed. They have no more right. Their spiritual claim is over. Their spiritual power is ended in terms of the sorcery of magic and, and magic of money. It is over. It is totally over. All that will be remaining is force, which is still formidable, and popular ignorance, which means people will still use Federal Reserve notes. People will still believe the business in charge. People will still believe that their currencies are good. But as far as the magic in terms of cursing, in the use of Sesakai V, in the use of bonds, in the rituals of baptism, in the act of birth, in the use of gold. Let's talk about gold. The value of their gold as an underwriting of money is rendered worthless. Gold is rendered worthless by the dishonour. So a lot's at stake. History is at stake. Will they do the right thing? We're dealing with people that have never been more ignorant of their past, never been more stupid of their ancestors. These people do not deserve to be in the position they are and their ancestors must be spinning in their graves at how awful these people have been in recognising history. But no, they will not do the right thing. They can't do the right thing. They are doomed to be who they are in history. And that is what we must do. We must make sure this package goes out. And I call and ask on all those who are willing to put their thumbprint to it, who are willing to spend a few dollars, who are willing to come together to the north, to the south, to the west and to the east, as did the package in June the 12th. The material for this package will be ready in the next week. So I ask for assistance from those of you who are willing to be part of this history. So that's what we're doing coming up and I will need your help, as I say. And uh, in terms of coming back, uh, I'll be asking uh, Gerald to put up a forum there on University of Acadia. Um, and all we need effectively is... Uh, well, there are a number of packages to go out in each area, so I'm not asking three people to, to have to pay for uh, seven different packages. So hopefully we can get a group of maybe 10 or 12 people to the north, to the south, to the west and to the east who are willing to uh, send this out. And uh, if you have, raise your hand and, and we have more than enough people, I thank you, but let's see that we have enough people and more than enough people to start with to get this out. I hope we can get this out in the next week and a half. Okay, so that was a fair bit to cover and we're up to 40 minutes already. Um, look, the reason I, re I raise this, the reason I raise this is of course the seriousness of what's taking place 
in Europe at the moment and the impending collapse of the euro. I know that people's uh, speaking of financial Armageddon continues to uh, increase around and there's all kinds of rumours swirling. The supreme financial system will be operational from August the 13th, I assure you. And while we may not have all the automation of those systems in place, you will be able to use these currencies between yourselves and for the benefit of you and your family from that date. That is a solemn oath I give you. These currencies will be operational from August the 13th and 14th. So from here until that date, you will hear from me going through step by step Next week, I look forward to showing you that you can go and actually see the different instruments. We'll be talking about uh, how the currencies work, uh, how you can um, uh, gain different um, units of currency, how you exchange them, how you use them, how you redeem them, um, how the accounts work. We'll be going through that week to week to week from August and beyond to make sure that each and every one of you is fully familiar and fully comfortable with what is being involved with this currency and how what this is all about when it comes down to it is reclaiming your energy no longer being drained of your energy or energy being taken by these people reclaiming your energy now if you don't produce energy of course then there is no way to justify that you can obtain uh, credits, of course. No one can expect something for nothing. However, they have taken your energy before. They continue to take your energy now. And you have the right, all of us have the right, to reclaim our energy. So I look forward to showing that to you over the coming weeks. Now, in the time that is available, I did say that I want to talk also about the updates to positive law. So I would like to cover that now in the few minutes remaining and as I say for those of you that have got questions I look forward to answering those questions uh, at the end of the hour by going star 8 or by you typing in the word question so in the time available the time left uh, I would like to go through some of the updates in terms of positive law I'll try not to cover it all because there's <laughs> been a lot there I've just put the link into the talk shoe for those that are listening live. So what has happened with the uh, canons of positive law is that as the structuring of administrative law is taking place and as the structuring of the um, uh, Uh, I'll be one second. I'm sorry. I'll be one moment. Sorry. Uh, I'm just being interrupted. I'm sorry. I'll be literally um, one minute. Sorry for that. Okay, what, um, what I'd like to do with that link is I'd like to explain to you the background on the updates to positive law and the updates to it uh, is the fact that once we've done the administrative law canons and once we've been doing the updates to ecclesiastical law and the work that was done on cognitive law, it became clear that there were a number of sections that were missing in positive law and this has also come from helping and discussing with you the challenges that you have been facing in terms of dealing with court and also some of the missing background in terms of rights. One moment. 